We've recently released Maple 2017. Everyone here at MapleSoft is very excited about this new release, the new version. In this webinar, we'll explore some of the most significant new features. What you see on screen is a broad overview of everything that's new. We've added features and functionality across the entire spectrum of usage. There really is something here for everyone. I'm going to talk about a subset of new features that have the most impact for technical professionals, scientists and engineers. Given our time constraints, I'll skip over a lot of detail, but if you do have any questions during or after the webinar, then please do let us know. And let's start off with the new package manager. As a historical note, the Maple Cloud was introduced several versions ago. It's an end product tool for sharing and deploying Maple worksheets and applications over the internet. With a few mouse clicks, the Maple Cloud lets you share your documents with your colleagues, students, friends and more. We've given the Maple Cloud a new crisp interface. Let me show you what it looks like. Here you can download all of the math apps, worksheets and applications that you could do in the previous version of the Maple Cloud. And now with Maple 2017, you can also download and install user-created packages. Packages are groups of related commands developed by enthusiastic Maple users. These are all the packages that we currently have on the cloud. There are packages for cluster analysis, uh, global optimization, cryptology and more. You can either preview a package or install it. Let's preview this package for downloading and customizing Google Map images into Maple. When the package loads, you're given an introduction to the package generated by the author together with some examples. If you want to install a package, all I need to do is go back to the Maple Cloud window and click on this button, Install. Maple talks to the internet, goes off to the cloud and downloads and installs the package. You can now use all of the commands and functions within the package in your own, in your own applications. This used to be a laborious process. You had to find the package on the internet, download it, extract the archive to the appropriate directory and then modify the libname variable in Maple. Now, all of that laborious process has been removed and installing packages just takes a few clicks. So these are the packages that we currently have on the cloud and we're actively working with authors to move more packages onto the cloud. As I've already mentioned, once you've downloaded and installed a package, you can use that package's functionality in any of your application. For example, Here's an application that performs a design analysis on a steel beam under load and torsion. It uses the AIS C-Shapes database avail package available from the Maple Cloud. Once you download and install that package, you can extract the properties of structural steel shapes and use those in your design calculations. If the package author updates the, the uh, package, you're notified in this window here. This lets you quickly update the package with the new version. Moving on, Maple 2017 now lets you generate and customize world maps. Here we have a gallery of the type of maps that you can produce. You can connect points on maps with lines that indicate the shortest path. You can zoom in and out. This is actually a zoomed in map of Norway. You can experiment with different levels of detail. Here, for example, I've added internal political boundaries to a map of the UK. You can also add in place names. You can also generate choropleth maps. These are visualizations in which countries are colored with respect to the magnitude of a measured variable. 
You can also experiment with many different map projections as well. Everything here was generated using Maple's programming language and the new functionality. Let me show you how easy it is. So these are the commands that you need to generate a basic world map. These maps are fully customizable. You can change projections, colouring, the size of the map and more. Here for example I change the map I've just generated into a different projection. Let's change this into the Mercator projection. If I hit enter the map is regenerated according to the new projection. I can also easily add labels and points to a map as well. Here for example I specify the longitude, latitude and the label I want given to a specific location. I can also change levels of detail. Again here I've added internal political boundaries to a map of the UK. Maple 2017 also offers a geographic database of place names cross-referenced with the longitude, latitude and the population. And this is how you use that geographic database. With this command I'm extracting country capitals with a population of over 8 million. And here you can see Maple has returned about uh, 9 different values. This geographic database is tightly linked to the mapping tools, so I can generate a world map and add the points found by the geographic database straight to the world map, as you can see here. I can also experiment with many different map projections. I think I've shown you a few projections already but this is a broad overview of all the different types of map projections you can produce so uh, this is a Winkle triple projection this is a Cassini projection this is a bond projection and there are many others that you can play with you can also view the world map on a globe as well this is very neat This next new feature I'm really excited about because it's something that many customers have requested. You can now distribute password protected executable con content. This is a long standing request from many of the users that I speak to on a daily basis. Many of them want to distribute their applications and specialized code. They want others to be able to use the code, but they don't want to reveal their specialized techniques or algorithms. And now with Maple 2017, they can. The process uses the workbook file format that we introduced last year. For those of you who aren't familiar with workbooks, they let you collect many Maple worksheets and data files into a single file on your computer. So if you want to send a Maple-based analysis project to someone else, you only need to email one file instead of several. What you're looking at right now is a workbook with two Maple worksheets associated with it. There's the worksheet that you're reading right now, together with a protected worksheet. Here, it's indicated by the padlock. If I try to open this worksheet by double-clicking on it, Maple asks me to enter a password. And of course, if I don't know the password, I can't view the worksheet. However, I can still send parameters into the worksheet and extract results using a very simple syntax. So here I'm sending a couple of parameters into the lock worksheet and extracting and viewing the results. If I change the values of these parameters, and rerun the command, Maple sends the updated parameters into the worksheet and shows me the updated results.
Now, many technical professionals use Maple for visualisation. Whatever the actual application or discipline, there's always one common theme, the need to visualise results and data. To that end, we've built an extremely flexible visualisation engine into Maple. As well as many built-in cu uh, customizable pods, you can also use the plotting primitives to construct your own visualizations as well. And we've made several critical enhancements to Maple's visualization tools with the new version. Now you can actually ask Maple to present information that pops up when you hover over a point or a curve. These are known as plot annotations. Let me show you an example of an application that uses plot annotations. In this application, I'm actually downloading and visualizing, visualizing live earthquake data from the US Geological Survey website. Let me update the data that this application uses. You should see some of the points change. If I hover over any of the points, you see information associated with the points. By the, world, by the way, the world map, the map uh, used for this visualisation was actually generated by Maple's new world map tools. I can actually change the projection and the style used by this map. This just gives it some extra visual gloss. Plot annotations are very easy to create. Here, for example, I've plotted a sine curve. If I want to add a plot annotation to this sine curve, that's simple enough to do. All I do is something like this. If I hit enter, Maple regenerates the plot. And if I hover my mouse over the line, you see the annotation I've created. Plot annotations are also automatically added to contour plots. Here, I generate a contour plot, and if I let my mouse hover over any of the contour lines, I see the level of that contour. So plot annotations, while they say, may seem like a small feature, actually introduce an extra level of information and richness that you can include in your plots. Here's another example of plot annotations. In this application, I'm visualizing the color of gold, silver, copper alloys on a ternary plot. If I let my mouse hover over any of the points, I see the composition of the alloy. We've made several other additions to Maple's plotting tools. There are a few new built-in plots that I think everyone will find of value. The thermophysical data package was introduced in last year's new version of Maple. This package gives you the transport and thermodynamic properties for over 100 pure fluids and for arbitrary fluid mixtures. The package when we introduced it last year, also had several built-in visualization tools, including psychometric charts, which give you the properties of humid air, and pressure enthalpy charts. For this release, we've added the ability to generate and customize temperature entropy charts for any of the pure fluids in the thermophysical data package. So this is the temperature entropy chart for sulfur dioxide. Let's regenerate this for water. There are many different ways I can customize this chart. For example, I can change the entropy and temperature range over which this, over which this chart is generated. And by the way, they, this chart actually uses real fluid properties. I can also change the number of isobars, which are presented on the plots, and much more. These charts are actually Maple plot objects. They're live. You can actually overlay lines on top of this chart to indicate the flow of a thermodynamic cycle. Now, 
Moving on to the enhancements that we made to signal processing. In this worksheet, I'm importing a node of audio file of human speech. Now previously, I could generate a spectrogram of my data. Now with Maple 2017, I also have a standalone command to generate a periodogram, which gives me the power spectrum. There are many options which allow you to customize the appearance of this periodogram or the power spectrum. For example, the y-axis, the power, is automatically given in uh, a, a decibel scale. If I wanted to, I could change the scale to absolute values instead. By the way, we've also added signal processing tools to the context menus. If I right click on this thing, which is a representation of the audio file that I've just imported, I see a new signal processing menu in the context menu. This allows me to apply signal processing functions to my data file. I can perform FFTs, wavelet analysis, I can window the data, or I can generate spectrograms, periodograms, and more, all via the context menu. Now, I've saved the most significant new visualization feature for last. We've completely refreshed and updated the plot builder for Maple. Now, I want to show you this feature in context. So here I'm looking at the radiation pattern and directivity of an antenna array. Let me just re-execute the entire worksheet. I won't go into this in too much detail, but here I end up with an expression which gives me the array factor of the antenna array. Now, this expression is usually visualized in a polar plot. With older versions of Maple, you would have had to search through the syntax for the polar plot command to actually uh, generate a polar plot of, uh, uh, of this expression. Now, all I have to do is right click on this expression, select plots, and plot builder. Now, a panel slides out from the right hand side of the interface which allows me to generate various types of plots. For this particular application, I want to generate a polar plot, but if I wanted to, I could also convert this straight back to a 2D plot instead. I can also customize the polar plot by the plot builder as well. I can change the line style, I can fill the polar plot and more. There are many different ways I can customize the look and feel of this polar plot. So the plot builder is one of those features which only comes along once every few years or so, but it really is a fantastic time saver. Rather than hunting through the syntax of uh, the maple plot commands, you can simply right click on an expression and generate a plot automatically. Now, you can also use the plot builder as a mechanism of learning how to use maple commands to show to generate plots as well. If I check this option, show command, this is the actual maple command used to generate the plots. If I wanted to, I could simply copy this command and paste it into maple. If I hit enter, it generates the polar plot that's automatically generated by Plot Builder. So this is a great way of learning Maple syntax as well. So let's talk about the new Maple portal for engineers. In my experience, if you ask an engineer how you how they prefer to learn, the vast majority, including me, will say, will say show me an example. We've taken that pedagogical philosophy into account when developing the new Maple Portal for Engineers. It's a collection of tips, tutorials and applications that cover the most significant aspects of Maple for technical professionals. 
and examples and applications are employed throughout. There are sections on data analysis, signal processing, fluid properties, units and far more. If I look at the section on signal processing, in the main body of the documents I have a brief introduction to the functionality. However, on the right hand side I have links to relevant complete applications. For example, here in this application I can learn how to denoise a single a signal using frequency domain filtering. So the final section I want to talk about are the improvements that we've made to Maple's tools for math. And this is really the bread and butter of Maple. This is what brings many users back to Maple year after year. Many of our users are mathematicians and research engineers. They, they demand a strong, robust math tool that's constantly pushing the boundaries forward. And Maple 2017 has many improvements to the core math and programming tools and here's a small selection of the improved functionality. I'm personally impressed by the improvements to int. We've enhanced the core algorithm which means that we can actually solve more integrals. There are also improvements to series and limits, symbolic summation, the symbolic PD solvers have had many improvements uh, for example, uh, PDs that previously required hints are now solved automatically. There are also improvements to bivariate limits, group theory, number theory, and many other parts of Maple. So, that was everything I wanted to talk about. We've only just scratched the surface of what's new in Maple 2017. There is much more. If you want to discover more, then feel free to go to our website and look at the What's New section. Uh, if you want to ask us a question, then feel free to email us or, or you can interact uh, with us through many of our social channels, such as our discussion forum, our Facebook group, our Twitter feed, our YouTube channel and more.